What do we have here, Simon? I got a box of driven racing oil. You think that's oil for people that drive their race cars? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Oval Window Garage, where we got Simon's engine back in, Simon, and we're about ready to test out the new fuel system that I install and put a new uh, fuel pump with some uh, filters and I've ran a few um, ethanol friendly lines, not, not, not all of them, but just uh, the long runs of the car here. But I am about to do something new, well, new to me anyways. About to ready to fill Simon up with some of this uh, driven racing oil. I've never used driven racing oils and they've been around for quite a while. A matter of fact, they're one of the pioneering companies that helped uh, produce the uh, break-in oils that we use nowadays. <laughs> I'm gonna be adding the GP1 uh, blend here, a synthetic blend, a 2050. Um, it's full of uh, zinc and phosphate, you know, that good stuff to help smoothen and cushion the impact on the old uh, solid lifters that we have in these little cars here. <laughs> I am excited to see that it is uh, labeled on here. It is a Pennsylvania grade. It means it probably comes from that uh, Bradley, uh, Pennsylvania location. And it is designed to be used with methanol and E85. If you guys have been following the channel, uh, you know I've got a flex fuel sensor in this car and I plan on running uh, a lot of E85. So uh, enough talking, uh, let's get to filling. <laughs> I still got the spark plugs out of uh, the engine, so once I get um, a good level of oil in here, we'll start rolling them over and uh, you know try to get some oil pressure. And then we'll uh, once we get the oil pressure, we'll uh, try to see if we can get fuel pressure without any leaks. And then we'll put the plugs back in and see if it ignites and comes back to life. I'm kind of excited to see what color this oil is. So let's get busy. Now for the reveal. I need to rethink my funnel selection here. Need a lot shorter one. It's kind of a bluish green. I'm used to running a straight 30 blend. It seems to pour out a little faster. This is a 2050 blend, so it's on the thick side right now because it's been in the cold. Simon here generally holds uh, about six quarts of oil with a oil cooler and the extended sump. I didn't drain the whole system, so I think we're only gonna need a little over four today. I could be wrong, we'll find out. Driven, driven to win. Racing oils. Hey, that's, that's two, let's do a check. Probably not gonna see anything on the, nothing on the dipstick yet. Do another check. Nothing yet. Probably have to do a slow drain on these because I think there's still some in the bottom. It's coming out pretty thick. I don't think we got up to 35 degrees yesterday, but today it's scheduled to get up to 60 here in Michigan. <laughs> And tomorrow in high 50s and back down in the 30s and 40s again. I think March came in like a lamb and is going out like a lion. Should be something on the dipstick now. That's four quarts. A little right on the very end. Another check. Oops, get in the hole. We're right at the very, very bottom of the dipstick. Get you guys a good look at the color here. Kind of a bluish green aqua. Simon's used to the green oil, so maybe he won't notice it's different. Try to put about a half a quart of this in here and see, and we'll check it and see where it's at. Not much 
stuff in the way. You're about an eighth inch above that bottom line. I'm going to start cranking her over and, and that way I can tell if it starts to drop down some. So that's pretty good sticky slippery stuff. Now if I was that vice grip guy I'd probably taste it. I've never done that before and I don't think I want to start. <laughs> If I check, the battery is now hooked up. I've got the juicer on it, and it should roll over easy. Like I said, the spark plugs are out of it. So you guys watch back here and uh, make sure everything's okie dokie. Hanky dory. Oh uh, well. <laughs> Just start rolling it over. Come on, all right. I think I've seen it wiggle a little. Roll her over some more. Oh yeah, baby. Got about 35 pounds just by cranking her over. Let's take another check here and top her off. Yep, it definitely went down. Probably could put the rest of this cord in there, we'll be good. Show you guys a little trick. I grab a couple of these little uh, round, squared off O-rings out of a leftover gasket kit kind of works as a seal you know if you're running your older old uh, original dipstick i'd actually like to get one of those sealing dipsticks in here but if you put it down here you know that's that's good but if you actually rotate a friend showed me this a, a long time ago and kind of uh press it down underneath here it'll kind of almost click in there yeah it'll actually lock underneath your uh generator stand down there and you know, those O-rings will help seal down on the bottom. But yeah, a little helpful hint there. Okay, I've uh, tightened a couple things. Uh, reconnected the battery completely. The ECU was buzzing at me. I hope I didn't hurt it. I didn't have all the grounds hooked to the, for the ECU. Just the main ground, for because I know the starter will roll over with that. Uh, I almost forgot the O2 sensor, so I got that calibrated and that all back together. And the plugs are in, so let's see if it'll fire up, make some noise. I'm gonna run it just shortly and then check for oil leaks and see if Simon will wake up here. Just gonna check fuel leaks. A little damp over here. Yep, a little damp over here. Why, well, other than that, right now I got about 40 pounds of fuel pressure, so it should run. Looks like I got one little tiny oil leak, uh, hopefully I can take care of. It's that uh, oil tee that I put on. I might not have got the uh, pressure gauge uh, all the way uh, tightened. That may take a little Loctite or something to, to seal that up or maybe a couple more turns. We'll hope, hope that's it. Yeah, before I leave off here, uh, yeah, 
Simon started right up and sounded really good. I changed spark plugs. I went to a non-projective tip. I guess I was running it wrong with the projected tip. Not a, not a good thing for boost. Back to the driven oils here. Driven racing oils. I'm really excited to try this out. I was chatting with him on the phone. They actually make like a straight 70 weight and a straight 90 weight, which is a real thick oil. And it's what the, some of the drag and drive guys, you know, the big guys are, are running in there. But you know, I mentioned to them that I'd like to run a straight 30. And they said they're actually working on blending a straight 30, a straight 40, and a straight 50. So, uh, Maybe I'll have that here in the future to try out. But yeah, for now, <laughs> I got a couple little things to take care of and get the tires back on Simon so I can take them for a test drive. But until then, keep cruising, keep shifting those gears, and always enjoy the ride. Let's go. Before I was just another guy. Look at me now, I'm way up high. Back here. Hey, copyright infringements, man. They can't be playing that music. Can you hear it? <laughs> you can hear it. What copyright infringements. Oh, you delay them.